Welcome back to the 1A System uh, 21 question video series. Today we're going to talk about the root cause of pain and injury. I know that in a lot of our previous videos and a lot of videos that will be coming up, we always allude to the root cause and we get questions on what is the root cause uh, of pain and injury. Today that's what we're going to talk about and if you can figure out how to identify and target the root cause, you can stop doing all of the gadgets and garbage and gimmicks that are out there and get real lasting results. So behind me I have a, a flow chart that we're going to fill in here in a second um, and as you can see we do have symptoms on there. So most of our patients when they come in think they're coming in because we need to treat these things. The problem with the medical model is we've fallen into the thought process that, yep, pain is your problem, lack of range of motion is your problem, muscle spasm is your problem. So we're going to go through this flows chart and figure out, is this the beginning or is that the end of the progression to injury and pain? If this is the beginning, then we need to keep on treating symptoms with all of the gadgets, garbage, and gimmicks that are out there. If this is not the beginning, then we need to stop wasting our time chasing symptoms and get to the root cause. All right, let's get to our flow chart. We see that we have a couple stages uh, in the progression to injury here. And what we at 180 uh, believe is the root cause of pain and injury is what is called neuromuscular inhibition. So when we have neuromuscular inhibition, that causes muscle misfiring and weakness, okay? So if the muscles can't fire on time with appropriate amount of firing to stabilize or move the joint, then we have joint instability. When that joint is not used appropriately and has too much stress put on it, then we get stress, wear and tear on the joint. This could be pressure on meniscus, pressure on ligaments, um, connective tissue, and when those things get irritated, then we finally get symptoms. So as we see from this flow chart, this is not the beginning. This is. So when we go through this with patients, they understand now that they have pain, swelling, loss of range of motion, whatever they're coming in for, because this was the very beginning. So if we attack this and we stop this from happening, we cut this off. So if we don't have inhibition, we don't have misfiring or weakness. We also eliminate or decrease joint instability, joint stress, wear and tear, and symptoms go away without treating symptoms. So that's why in our treatment clinic, we have a table. We have a thought process. We have our hands. We have kettlebells. We have... Uh, um, slam balls, we have band, tubing, all of those things that will help us reinforce normal neuromuscular uh, facilitation and get rid of inhibition. That's where the key lies. So when our patients understand what this feels like when it's inhibited and what it feels like when we reverse the inhibition and we have normal facilitation, they understand why they got little to no progress treating symptoms and why we're not going to waste our time treating their symptoms because once we stop this from happening, symptoms go away. So that's why with a thought process and a treatment strategy that focuses on root cause, we don't have to spend our time with repetitive uh, visits and lack of progress because we spent too much time getting hung up on these things here. Remember, we are the professionals, so we should be educating our patients why they have this, not just trying to waste their time and money covering it up with gadgets, gimmicks, and garbage.